Welcome back to part 2 of the CRX rear bumper repair. In case you missed the first one, I'll put a card right here in the top right hand corner. So you're going to want to check that out before you watch this video. And here I am using my wire wheel to try to clean up the sheet metal. And at this point the panel bonding adhesive is completely cured. But you know what, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, yo DJ bring me, that me, beat me. back. There's some as we see it. Bring the rainbow her ear. Get a rid of the scary of scary cigars. I went on ash damn stairs. Let's see the rid of the sticky pot. Finally we're playing. That's why you never go bareback. It's been a few days since I installed this panel and the panel bonding adhesive has had plenty of time to cure now so it's safe to remove the screws and the nuts and bolts that we have holding this thing in place. This is where that blue painter's tape really comes in hand because you're going to see that the washers come off with very little effort. If you didn't have some sort of barrier between the panel and the washers, they're basically going to get glued on and you'll have a difficult time trying to remove them. So I'm just going to use like a Scotch-Brite disc here on my die grinder to try to clean up the surface here and remove the excess glue that might have squeezed out uh, nothing crazy so here I am using a file and I'm just gonna go in here where the holes are at to clean up the glue that squeezed out I'm not trying to remove any of the metal off of the panel all of that's already done there's no need to do any of that just cleaning up the glue here and now you're all caught up so I want to put a wire brush on my die grinder here and just start to clean up this panel and the reason for that is we're gonna start welding this thing in place and you want the surface as clean as possible. I'm going to be using these fancy pliers here. You can see they have like a copper backing plate. Um, they're not really necessary, but they do kind of help. It helps to bring the panels into alignment like this. And uh, the copper actually works as a little bit of a heat sink, if that's what you're looking for when you're trying to weld a panel. Uh, so let's go ahead and burn this thing in. Know that the ride or die. I keep boys by my seat. Know that the ride or die. I keep boys by my seat. Know that the ride or die. I keep boys on my seat. Know that the ride or die. I keep boys on my seat. Know that the ride or die. My name came up a lot of sounds. More when I was not around. Certain people that I know, they no longer about. My name came up a lot of sounds. More when I was not around. Certain people that I know, they ain't no longer about. My name came up a lot of sounds. More when I was not around. Certain people that I know, they ain't no longer about. Here I'm mixing a body filler because it was my original intent to put filler over the weld but I quickly changed my mind and I'll talk more about that later on but I decided to keep this in the video to show you in case you wanted to do something like this because you very much can put filler over welds. Now you can see the amount of filler I have here on this cardboard box and versus the amount of hardener. It does not take a lot. Don't go crazy with this stuff. Just a little dab of hardener is good enough. And you can see I'm not stirring this, okay? I'm just folding it over and over on top of itself. That's how you mix filler. You do not want to stir it. And I normally get the comments about the cardboard box that you're not supposed to put filler on cardboard box. And yes, I'm well aware of that. I just didn't have the proper mixing pad for it. So you can see here I'm using my small plastic applicator that I actually cut in half because uh, the original part was just too large and I'm applying it over the welds. 
And if you wanted to, you could put this over the entire panel if your desire is to sand all of it down and make it look really smooth. But that's not what I'm going for here. I'm not trying to win any awards or anything like that, okay? I just want it to be functional and look halfway decent. I'm not going to take it in for any trophies or something. So, <laughs> And let's just be realistic. It's a part no one's ever going to see, right? So I think it's getting a good enough treatment. As you can see, I'm doing a pretty crappy job at masking off the area. I'm really just doing the bare minimum so I don't get any overspray on my exhaust system. And here I am using self-etching primer to get the sheet metal ready to accept a base coat. Now this thing is getting three healthy coats of primer and I'm waiting like 15 to 20 minutes between each coat. And after the third and final coat, I waited a full 24 hours for this thing to completely cure. It's now the next day and the primer is completely cured. So here I have a scuff pad just scuffing up the area wherever the welds are because I'm getting ready to apply my seam sealer. So now that it's all prepped, I'm just going to go ahead and blow it off with some compressed air just to make sure we get off any loose dust or things like that. And I'm going to grab regular old masking tape. I want to try to create some sort of a template for the seam sealer. I know it seems kind of weird, but it's going to give a overall cleaner appearance and it's just going to look a little bit more professional, a little bit more, let's just say OEM appearance. Okay. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about and how this masking tape is going to play a role. So let's just go ahead and get this mask off and we'll start with our seam sealer and just put a nice decent bead all the way across this thing. You don't need to go crazy because this stuff is actually really thick and it's going to fill in the gaps pretty well. What I'm doing here is really dabbing on the seam sealer and I'm trying to press it into the welds. You want the seam sealer to go into any little voids and take up all of that space to try to minimize the amount of moisture that might get trapped inside of there or work its way in there in the future. And now we could just grab a small acid brush and we're just going to give this thing a few happy little strokes. Remember guys, no mistakes, just happy little accidents, okay? And just give it some nice strokes to more or less create like an OEM look, right, from factory. So once we peel off the masking tape, look how clean that looks. Tell me that doesn't look clean. Come on, guys. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same exact process on the two holes that I welded up on top. And I chose to just make a square pattern because it was the easiest thing, obviously. And I found some bare metal right here, so I'm just going to spray it with some more self-etching primer and let all of this cure. So right here, this is actually the very next day. This thing has been curing for a full 24 hours. Now that everything is cured, it's time for some more scuffing and sanding. I started off with the scuff pad, but it honestly wasn't cutting it for me. I just wanted to work a little bit faster, so I switched over to sandpaper. Nothing aggressive with the grit, something real light. I'm just trying to blend in the hard lines of the primer so it doesn't really stand out when we apply the base coat. I decided to give a break to that rear panel because it just... You can only take so much, okay? <laughs> I got tired of messing with it, honestly. So I wanted to move on and I figured I'll come back to that rear panel. So for now, let's mess with the bumper and try to remove these brackets for the rear license plate. As you can see, everything is super rusty. So the only way to get these rotted away nuts off is to use my Dremel and just kind of cut them off. So I did what I had to to get these things off of here because honestly, I looked online and I could not find these brackets. I would have just bought them brand new but that's not the case with the CRX. So sometimes you just have to restore old parts.
as you can see these parts are looking pretty rough but i think they still have some life left in them so we have to go over to the sandblaster once we take as much rust off as we can we'll get a better idea of what we're working with So far I'm really impressed with the results we're getting out of the sandblaster so I think these brackets are going to turn out great once we're finished restoring them. You may have noticed that we have some broken off bolts inside of the nuts so we have to extract them. This next part of the video I'm not going to be talking over it or playing any music. Just uh, listen to the sounds of restoring something. It's kind of relaxing. I hope you enjoy this next part of the video.
as you can see the brackets turned out great i hope you enjoyed that section of the video because i really enjoyed uh repairing those brackets and a quick test fit back on the bumper just shows that they fit perfectly and we know they're going to work as they should so um i was going back and forth on whether i wanted to use por 15 on the brackets or if i just wanted to do a basic like primer paint and maybe even a clear coat but the more i thought about it i was like you know what uh license plates have to go on these they're going to be rattling uh and if you take a plate on and off it's going to scratch the paint and we all know how easily clear coat scratches so the, you know what it's pretty obvious that por 15 is going to be the way to go it's not going to have that nice of a surface finish once it's done but it's going to be very much durable against plates and scratches and it's going to be there for a lifetime unlike paint that can scratch off i decided to primer the brackets not that it needs it because the pr15 can stick to bare metal with no issues at all but i did see a lot of pitting on the brackets and i thought the primer might help with that pitting and it did to some extent so it came out halfway decent here i'm just using a small foam pad with some sandpaper on it to knock down the high spots on the primer and of course this is what I'm left with and now it's time to just hang them up and put some PR15 on them. PR15 doesn't have the best surface finish, but it sure is durable and I think it's going to hold up and do its job. As you can see, I picked up some stainless steel nuts and bolts and that's what's going to replace the old worn down rusty stuff that was on here. So these things are not going to rot away like the original parts did. And uh, if I ever need to take off these brackets, guess what? They're just going to come right off and the stainless steel hardware is going to just look nice. So I'm really happy with the way these brackets turned out. I could not ask for anything more. The only thing that would be better than this is to be able to find an original set like brand new in the package. But that's about it. <laughs> and of course, you know me spraying everything with CRC. So now that the brackets are in place, let's go ahead and actually try them out. See if they hold the plate. And that's it for the brackets. I think they turned out absolutely fantastic. It's crazy to think that someone could be excited over some simple little brackets, right? And to think people actually take parts like these off of cars and just chuck them right in the trash. Well, one man's trash is another man's treasure, right? I'm really happy with the way they turned out. But we have other things to take care of, so let's go back to that rear panel.
In the first video, I sprayed this center section with some CRC to protect the bare metal from rusting. And so now it's time to remove that CRC. Ideally, you would want to use some sort of a wax and grease remover, but all I have is brake parts cleaner. As you can see, it's kind of taking the paint off with it, which I'm not really too concerned about. But if you're not trying to remove your paint, definitely do not use brake parts cleaner. Here I'm trying to use sandpaper to sand down these areas where you could see the spot welds from factory. If I were to just paint over this the way it is, you would see the indentations through the paint and I really want to try to minimize that. You could actually go ahead and put some filler over these things if you wanted to, but again, I'm not going to go that far with it because it's not that big of an issue. But a little bit of sanding right now does uh, help, so I thought it was worth the effort. And now I'm going to do something that's a little controversial. I'm sure some of you since the beginning of the video have been yelling and throwing your tampons at the screen saying that I should have cleaned the panel before doing any type of body work and I can agree with that so settle down, settle down, it's finally getting done now. Now that the panel is all clean, let's start some painting. I'm gonna start off with the self etching primer. Now this can is just about empty and it's the last can I have and I have to make it work. So this section right here is only gonna get like two coats of self etching primer and then you're gonna see I switch over to a different primer because it's gonna be a different color. While that first coat of primer is curing, I got the bright idea to mask off things I don't wanna get over spray on. Shocker, right? And just so we're clear, I'm not going to be painting the entire rear panel. I'm only going to paint the sections that I've worked on. And the reason for that is because I still have more rust to fix. There's a section near the lower toe hitch that I have to cut out some sheet metal, make a new patch. And the same thing for the rear right side. The repair I made on the rear left side, I have to replicate it on the right side of the car. Um, so it's why I'm only painting a section of the rear panel. If you're wondering, well, why don't you just wait until you fix all of it and paint it all at once. And yes, that would be ideal, but my answer to that is because YouTube. <laughs> uh, no one's gonna sit down and watch a three hour video on this. So it's why I have to divide the videos like this. The amount of time that I have to work on a CRX, if I left one section of work that I already did, if I leave it exposed for too long, it's gonna start to flash rust or get surface rust on it. And I don't want any of that because it kind of defeats the purpose. So basically what I'm trying to do right now is protect the work I've already done so it gives me more than enough time to get to the work that needs to get done. So I hope all of that makes sense. I know you can't tell but I'm waiting about 10 minutes between each coat of primer and the reason for that is because it's actually a pretty hot day so it's not taking long for the primer to set up. And if you look closely, every time I give a coat of primer, I just tend to get a little bit wider and wider. It's like I'm trying to fan out the paint so you don't have such a hard line, you know what I mean? You want it to like gradually fade off or fade away. And I'm going to do the same exact thing when it comes down to so actually painting it using a red. And the paint I'm going to be using is the same exact red that I used in the first video from paintscratch.com. This is not a sponsor or anything like that. This is just where I bought the paint from. There's ton of other places you could get the paint from so here goes the very first coat of real red that i got in a rattle can and uh don't let the first coat discourage you uh the paint's never really gonna look right on the first coat because it's just that it's the first coat
it's been about 10 minutes so i'm back for my second coat and like i mentioned before i'm going to be fanning out the paint every time i lay another layer down it's just going to go wider and wider just to try to like feather it out and just kind of uh you know make it blend a little bit better and you notice how we primarily had two sections of primer one dead in the center and one off to the left and we're going to use the red paint to kind of bridge those two sections of primers together so each time i lay down more red i'm trying to put more red paint between the two primers to bring them together And here's the final coat. In this coat, I really tried to focus on sections that maybe looked like they were a little bit thinner or lighter than the rest. So that's why the spray pattern doesn't look as even. I'm just really looking at different angles and seeing maybe potential areas that I might have missed. But honestly, I'm really impressed with this rattle can paint. I mean, the color is not bad at all for coming out of a rattle can. Um, I'm actually really happy with the way it turned out, especially after the paint cured. It looks really good. It's uh, it's definitely a little bit shinier, but I mean the original paint on the car is so freaking old. What do you expect? Of course, it's going to be shinier, but the color looks pretty damn good. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this one. And of course, if you want to stick around and see part three, you already know what to do. So thanks for watching.